Welcome to lesson two, how to overcome distractions. So distractions by definition, and yes, I looked this up, is a thing that prevents someone from concentrating on something else. And the something else we're trying to do when we're being distracted in this context of feminine productivity fundamentals is working on our business. <laughs> So we've carved out this time, and if you haven't, don't worry, in module three, we're going to talk more about setting business hours, um, but you've intended to sit down and work on your business, but now you have something that is preventing you from concentrating, preventing you from focusing, and it is a distraction. It is an external something. So we're going to talk about procrastination in a little bit, which is our own, in lesson four, which is our own internal like resistance to doing a thing. But a distraction is, and there's two different types. It's a thing that we're thinking about that needs to be done, or it's us actually doing the something else instead of working. Or it's something where we need space to think about it. So it's probably something like coronavirus, and how that's impacting our lives. Or you might have a change in personal relationships, or you might have had like an argument with a friend, or you might be planning to move. Like there's lots of these external things from our own selves which distract us from working. So we've, if we're being distracted, we've defined the time we're wanting to work, even if that is I'm sitting down to work and now I can't focus, now something's preventing me from concentrating the way that I want to be. Um, we need to identify our distractions as one of these two things. So our distraction is either a thing that needs its own time and space to be done, or it's a thing where you need time and space to think about it, to emotionally process it, to just sit with feeling how you're feeling and not have to try concentrate on something else. Processing, integrating, feeling our emotions, thinking about this world thing, this family relationship thing, this like personal breakthrough trauma thing that you're dealing with, okay? So it's either that level of I need to think and feel about this, or it's a something that needs to be done. And like we talked about in, in lesson one with emotional labor, it's something to be done, but you also might be, you might not actually be doing it, but you're distracted because you're thinking about when it needs to be done, how it needs to be done, the things you need to consider to be able to get it done, how people are going to be impacted and react to you doing the thing. So it's all those layers of emotional labor that are around the thing that needs to be done that are distracting you. So it might actually not be doing the thing, it might be those other layers which are causing the distraction. So identify whatever's coming up for you, whatever is preventing you from concentrating on, you, on working, identify what they are and figure out which type of distraction they are. So we're gonna go into each of those types and talk about what to do about it. We're gonna get really practical about how we overcome these distractions. And the intention is that as we get better and better at overcoming these distractions, they actually won't distract us as much anymore. Partly because we've got the strategies and tactics in place that they don't come into our workspace in time, but also because dealing with them doesn't cause as much of a like emotional or mental um, impact on us. So it's coming back to the idea of flexing and adapting and how strong that muscle is so that if you know, something happens and it's kind of like this different and we're like, okay, we can roll with this. We can roll with this. We can adapt. We can stay on schedule. We can just tweak it here and there. But then if something comes and it's like this different, then we're completely thrown off and we have a whole lot more effort and change happening. Um, so that for some people, stuff goes like this, like for me these days, and I can roll with it for a good while <laughs> through most of lockdown, our five weeks in here in New Zealand of like full on lockdown, I could roll with it until right at the end and then it was getting a bit much. So how strong that muscle is and you'll strengthen that by thinking through distractions the way we're going to teach you to think through it um, in this lesson. So let's talk about things that need space to be thought about, because I think this is the one where we try to ignore it, we try to, um, we try to use all of these traditional productivity hacks 
to ignore what's distracting us. And we rely on our willpower, which we know is a limited resource and really not that effective, especially over time or throughout a day, we can use up our willpower really quickly. And it is not a reflection on how much we want to do something or how much motivation we have. It's a limited thing to start with. So we can stop beating ourselves up about not having enough willpower, about these productivity hacks not working. And we have two really, really widely impacting examples in the world right now, which will, whenever you're watching this far into the future, I'm sure, be echoing into the future. The first is coronavirus, COVID-19, and the second is the Black Lives Matter movement and the racial awakening and shifts that we are seeing and are going to continue to see through the future. They, they both kind of struck and hit around like we're happening at the same time. And that was a lot for a lot of people. And it's fine. It's allowed to be a lot. We are humans. We're emotional beings. As women and mothers, and when we are in our feminine energy, we feel, we are empathetic. We can like put ourselves in the shoes of other people and we feel it. And that is really powerful because then that can propel us into action. And that gives sound to our voice, right? That gives strength to our voice when we're talking about things that really matter for us, for our children, for the children of other mothers, for other mothers themselves, for other families, for other sons, daughters, fathers, mothers, everyone in this connected human race. Um, so when something like coronavirus happens, it's the, it's the type of thing where you just go off the chart. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Life as you knew, knew it now can't function that way. You're all of the structures that you've had in place all of the structures of where things are going to happen in your life, about how you've carved out the time for business, where the kids are in childcare or they're doing this other thing and you have this much time, everything got taken away. That was a super, super extreme situation. But hey, if we can roll with that, right, we can roll with anything. The point is, <clears throat> we need to create space for us to think about these things, for us to process what is happening, for us to have the emotional reaction to, oh gosh, my next month, my next six weeks. I know friends in America, we're in 2020 right now, where they are staying home from school, their kids, for the entire calendar year. They're not going back to school in September. And that is... As a mother who's running a business from home, that is something where you're like, I need to grieve. I need to grieve the year I thought I was going to have and the new reality that I am going to be working in. So, of course, it's distracting you from focusing and concentrating on work. Of course it is. And the solution is not to ignore it and stick a timer on and try some like productivity hack to still get stuff done. The solution is to create space to grieve, to feel your emotions, to process it, to integrate what's happening, to think about it. It might be coronavirus, it might be an illness diagnosis, it might be a death in the family, it might be an argument with your friend, it might be a breakup, it might be a new relationship, you might be moving house. There are so many things that aren't happening on a global scale that could have the same impact on your life. And it could be something, maybe it's like a more distant relative or a, or a, you know, a relative of a friend who dies and you want to support that friend, and you know that person, and you feel it, but in the grand scheme and impact of your life, it's like a week, two weeks of feeling sad, supporting that person, doing some extra stuff, and then you can pretty much recover and keep going. And there's, so there's different scales, again, to the impact of these activities, but the solution to the distraction is to allow yourself the space to process 
because it will continue to distract you until you do. You can use all of these masculine hustle productivity hacks in the world to ignore what you need to do and <laughs> you will bottle it up and it'll come up at some point. So a healthier response where we are leaning into both our feminine feeling energy and having our masculine containers of space, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, to be able to process these things. Give yourself the space to think about it. Now, the masculine feminine energies in this situation and what we're going to be talking more about as we go through this module and into later modules is the masculine container that then allows us to flow inside. It allows us to let the feelings out. It allows us to give a space for all of these things. It gives us space to process. Another container might give us space to like do life admin in the evenings with our partner. Another container might be, well, I only do the dishes first thing in the morning. And of course, more dishes happen by lunchtime because the kids have had a snack and I'm eating lunch, but it doesn't bug me because I do, I have a container for that. So the way that one of my coaches described this to me, which really resonated, um, was that a masculine container is a bit like those like 40 liter clear plastic storage bins, which I think a lot of us have had to put the baby clothes and the stuff in. They are very helpful for storage purposes. So imagine that as the masculine container, and then you've got the feminine flowing, sloshing around water. Now, if you have 30 liters of water and you pour it into the 40 liter container, it's beautiful, you can see it, it can move around, it can slosh and flow and it can sit there and it's, it's kind of a lot more solid. If you just pour 30 liters of water on the ground, it's just a puddle and it's a bit wet and no one really knows what to do with and people just want to clean it up and for it to go away. Now, how many of us have felt like that when it's come to our emotions or when things have got so bad, everything's just spilled over, right? It's just become this wet puddle on the ground that no one really knows how to deal with, let alone us. And we're sat there, like literally sat in the puddle, not knowing how to move forward. So the masculine containers being proactive about it, but also just thinking about having that masculine container around certain things can be really valuable and it actually gives more power and strength to the feminine energy, to the feelings, to being able to flow, to being able to be creative in whatever way that doesn't feel productive, but we know we have a container for it. So we intend for those two hours to be spent in a creative flow. And so we do feel productive because that's how we intended to spend that two hours. We didn't intend to spend that two hours like ticking off 20 things off our to-do list. So that's how the masculine container can really balance and work well with the feminine energy, the feminine flow, and all of the emotions. So the better way to like overcome and minimize the distractions that come from those big life things we need to think about, we need to emotionally process, we need to even integrate like personal growth and development. I get off a call from my coach and I'm like, I can't dive into something right away. I need to integrate and process and let this like sit for a bit. So allow yourself that space. And the best way to do that is to create that kind of masculine container for when and where to do it. Give it time and space. It might mean that now is not a good time to work. And now is the time you need to, to take to process and feel the feelings and do the stuff. Um, you will be more productive. You will get more done tomorrow, this afternoon, next week, if it has to be next week, than trying to push through and keep working now. It is the hardest practice to start and thing to allow ourselves that is why this course is here. That is why you can come into the Productive Business Mums Facebook community and share how much you're struggling with making this decision and get support from me and the other women in that group to make these choices that are the best choices for us, but we're so conditioned to not feel productive, to feel like we're running out of time and all of that, that it's a really big deal to take the choice to stop and not work to have that space. Another way to do it is again, not to ignore those feelings, but to say, okay, I really want to get this work done now. So I'm going to create this container of time 
after I've worked, maybe I'm only going to work half the time. Maybe once the kids get home, I'm going to stick them in front of the TV because I need to like sit and mentally process. Um, you've got a time, some space you've created to do that emotional work, to feel those feelings. So then again, you're not ignoring them and you can say, okay, I feel them. I'm going to just put them here, focus on the work, and then I'm going to come and deal with them. But do take that time and space. Because if you don't, it'll get harder and harder to put it to one side and you'll end up having to deal with it before you work. So that is how to overcome distractions when it is something that needs space to be thought about. The other type is a thing that needs its own space to be done. And it's actually the same strategy. It's just a slightly different type of thing. So um, some of the types of things that come up here are housework, running errands, um, having a, doing appointments, things that, that often need to be done like without kids around or they need to be done in like office hours and stuff. Those often kind of bleed into <clears throat> our work time and kind of take up the time that we intended for work. Um, but other things like catching up with friends, going to lunch with friends, having a coffee with a friend, it's like it's not work, but it's a really nice space. Like having a massage even could be like, oh, I'm actually using up an hour and a half of time I really intended for work, but I really wanted a massage and this was a really easy place to, to fit it. So a lot of those types of other life things can come in and distract us and take up time from working. Another one, and I'll see, I'll find the live stream I did on this, it's how to make the most of, how to make the most of nap time, because nap time is another very like high value space that us as mothers have with children that do nap, because my two-year-old has just dropped his day nap. It's really sad. I'm still adjusting and processing and mentally taking space to deal with that. However, um, that's a nap time's a time when, especially if we're newer, like we want to do all the things. I'm looking at my dishes. Um, it's a time where we're like, oh, we can eat lunch. We can do the dishes. We can pick up the house and we can do all these things because we don't have the baby around and it's easier. But that is such high quality time for ourselves, for our business, or to take time for what we need, that we need to protect it as such. We need to protect it as, as such. So what we need to do is, again, create space and time and redistribute these activities throughout the week. So you'll probably find that you don't actually have a, a place for, like, the housework or your expectations is another thing like I talked about um, I think doing the dishes in lesson one like I we usually do the dishes in the morning and at dinner time usually um, but things will accumulate during the day the dishwasher is probably dirty but we're not actually putting dishes in the dishwasher we're just sticking them on the bench but that's fine that's our expectation because we have these pockets of time in which to do the dishes so we don't let the problem of doing the dishes or the problem of the dirty bench like enter into our brains or into our reality when we're trying to focus on working because we know it has a time and space and we know it will be dealt with. And we also know there'll always be dishes. I've got a plate and a cup right next to me. <laughs> there will always be dishes. So it is not worth our time and energy to constantly be keeping on top of the dishes with every spare moment. Have a place, set your expectation, and then free yourself to focus on your work, free yourself to create the space for those other things that create, that need thought. Because quite often we might solve this problem. We'll solve the problem of distractions like errands and catching up with friends or appointments, but we don't solve the distractions where we actually need to create space for ourselves to process and emotionally just feel our feelings. So it's so important that we redistribute the things that need to be done and we go some way to solving the emotional labor imbalance so that we do have time, not just for our business, but we have time for ourselves to think and process and grow and integrate and feel our feelings. Because we 
you know, if we can't create space and time for our business, we definitely are not going to be prioritizing ourselves and the time we need there. And so then everything stays in conflict. Um, so yes, I talked in lesson one a little bit more about housework and errands and things like that. So um, go back and listen to that lesson. Um, if you've got particular distractions you're thinking about now that we've been talking through this um, for how ideas of how you can solve that or come into the Productive Business Mums Facebook group and share your distraction, which I want you to do anyway off the back of this lesson, come into the group and share what are your most common distractions. Maybe there's just one thing that keeps bugging you at the moment. Maybe you know you need to create space to like process this next phase of coronavirus impacting your life. Um, come into the group and share with us what your distraction is. Um, but the other type of thing that isn't housework, that isn't errands, that I see come up a lot for myself and for other friends and mums in the business space is the social stuff, the coffee with friends, the walk with a friend, the lunch with a friend. Um, because guess what? We're allowed a flipping social life. We're allowed to maintain our own personal relationships. And no, it doesn't have to be at the expense of our business time. But again, we've probably not thought about where can we do this? We've not set an expectation with ourselves. We've not set a boundary or an intention that this is sacred business space. And yes, I actually do want to catch up during the day when my kid is at kindy um, with my mum friend. Maybe she has a little baby, but guess what? It's a whole lot easier to chat and catch up with her when I can switch my mum brain off and support her as a mother rather than all of our kids being there and then we just don't even have a conversation. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, you've just probably not thought about like, when can I do those things? So maybe you have, and there's, again, this comes back to the masculine container. What type of container works for you? And again, we're going to talk in module three more about the just enough structure. So you don't want to over-engineer any of this. You just want to put enough of a container around these things that are a problem. Again, don't solve anything that's not broken, not worth your time and effort. Only look at the distractions that are coming up for you at the moment and then put just enough of a container around it so that it's moved out of that time. It's moved out of your awareness for that time. There is a time and space elsewhere in your week, month, life to deal with it, to do it, to take the action, to process whatever you need to do. So that includes chatting with friends and having time with friends. So um, it's probably something where you've just like not thought about it. <laughs> It's come up that you can actually catch up with a friend maybe every week or every other week. And so you're like, yes, I love this. I want to do it. But now you're like, oh, I feel like I've run out of time to do X, Y, Z in my business today. So it's really just about realigning your expectation. And maybe that day of the week is absolutely fine for you to have a coffee date with your friend or go for a walk with her and chat. But when you add two or three of those in on different days of the week, that really throws you out and you're not in balance anymore. And again, we're talking all about balance. And in module three, when we talk about just enough structure, we go into this whole concept of balance a little bit more. Um, so we're, we're going to work through, through this in more detail. Um, but it's not in balance. Whereas if you said, okay, on Wednesdays, I do a lot of um, like networking stuff for my business anyway. So I will be, uh, it fits to have a couple like dates with my friends on that day. Then great. That's kind of, again, creating a container so that that day becomes a very social day. And the other days are protected for different types of concentration and focus and work. Now, again, this is just one example of a container. There are lots of different ways you can do this. Come into the Facebook group to help come up with ideas and to strategize. Um, because guess what? One size doesn't fit all. And this example could work for some people and be the complete opposite thing that other people need. But it's all about thinking about like how many social appointments fit in my week and feel in balance. And so figuring out what those boundaries are for you so that you can say no, so that you can say, no, I can't catch up this week. What about next week? So you can say, no, I need to work, but why don't we catch up in the evening? Why don't I give you a ring? It's about boundaries that you've already set with yourself so you don't feel like you're rejecting the people that you love and actually do want to catch up and spend time with and creating space in your life that is in alignment and is in balance with all the other things you want to do. 
because we can have it all. We just get to define it all and we get to figure out what the right mix is, what the right blend of all these things is. So what might feel as a, like a really negative distraction is actually something that needs time and space that you probably haven't given it. So that is the solution. That is how you overcome distractions. Figure out which type it is. Is it a thing that needs its own space to be done? Or is it a thing that needs space to be thought about, to emotionally process, to grieve? Figure out what type it is and then decide where it's gonna go. And once you solve this problem for all, a lot of the things that need to be done, they won't come up again because they've got a space. So that's minimize the distractions you, you have. Um, when you realize and start to practice working with creating space for the things that need to be thought about and emotionally processed, then the waves don't become this big every time one thing comes in and distracts you. The waves become this much of an impact. So again, it minimizes your distractions. We've not actually like removed the distractions from happening in some cases. We've moved them somewhere else and we've also strengthened our ability to deal with them. So, oh, isn't this such good stuff? Oh my goodness. Come into the Productive Business Mums Facebook group. I'm gonna link it as a resource below this lesson so that it's nice and accessible. And come and share your biggest distraction right now. If there's more than one that's coming up for you, like dump them in there and let's start to troubleshoot. Let's redistribute. Let's figure out how to create space in your life for these other things to be done or to be thought about so that you can protect the time you want to be spending on your business and then you can concentrate and distractions will not be one of those problems. In the next two lessons, we're going to talk about, um, what are we going to talk about? Where's my notes? We're going to talk about um, interruptions. That's when someone it's a, it's a something is actually coming and interrupting you. It's not something you're thinking about. And procrastination, which again is an internal resistance. Um, and so that way you're going to be freed and be able to focus and concentrate. And then um, I'm really excited. So let's go into lesson three, interruptions.